This is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. I have my very first special guest with me today, Master Woodworker Chester Spear. Now this is a real treat because he's going to take us through some basic woodworking tools that are going to help us around the house. As every DIY knows, we have our little toolkit here full of all of our basic hand tools, but if there's something that you need to fix regarding wood, you need some extra tools to get those jobs done, and he's brought some unusual things with him. Hi Chet, welcome to my studio. Hi Renee, thanks for having me. Great. You know, Chet has his own YouTube channel, so you can check out all of his projects on YouTube. He's got some really interesting stuff that he works on, and you know what, he was in the film and television industry for many years and worked on a lot of the things that you've probably seen yourself. So you can check out his channel, see if you recognize anything, and Chet, tell us about what we have here today. Well, I brought you an assortment of woodworking tools that I think are important for the homeowner and crafter. And that's what I wanted to show is some of these may seem more complicated than you need, and they are, and I've included them in the selection just to show you that those aren't tools that you really need to buy. They're more for the professional. But they're, you don't need eight different types of planes. You only need one or two to do a couple of jobs that you're going to need for either doing like a picture frame or making a box or if you're making a valance for over a window and you want that wood to be smooth. But when you bring it back from the uh, lumber yard, it's going to have saw marks on it and you can sand forever and try to get it smooth or having one of these tools will make it very fast for you to get that board nice and smooth and straight. Okay, so let's see exactly, you know, I'm really interested to see what this thing does. <laughs> well, that's tied into the chisels. Okay. So this is called a mallet and mm -hmm. it's a carver's mallet and the reason the head is so big is so that you don't have to use a lot of force. So basically all you're doing is tapping it like that. Now there are different types of chisels. You see this has a wooden handle mm -hmm. and this shank of this blade only comes to about here. So if you were to hit this with a hammer, you would crack that handle and it would be a terrible thing because you couldn't use the chisel after that. So with this, you use on the wooden handles. That one you see has a metal shank going all the way through it and this is more for a carpenter's chisel. So and what do you so, use something like this for? Well, if you had a door that you wanted to hang, or you're making a little box and you wanted to inlay that hinge into the wood, mm -hmm. there's a, you have to cut a little rectangle. And you can't get a saw in there because it's, it's inset. So what you would do is you draw the line of the hinge, and then you can come in with, depending on which size it is, mm -hmm. and you can use that chisel to push in and take that wood away. But then you have specialty chisels like this one which is a gouge and you see it's round this way mm -hmm. now this one has the bevel of the sharpening blade on the outside and what that does is it allows you to dig into the wood like this and then go forward and so you can cut a gouge in the wood round that way some of them have this bevel on the inside and the purpose of that is to come in and cut a circle this way so okay. if you wanted a round hinge, like the corner of the hinge was round, then you could push it in that way and get a nice clean line. The smell of the tools really reminds me of being in my grandfather's workshop. And you know what? He had tools like this too, chisels that I used inappropriately and made giant gouges in. So Chet, how do we take care of something like that if we have old tools or if they came from a garage sale and you need to sharpen them? These are oil stones. There are also water stones and there are other types. Some people use sandpaper on top of uh, granite to keep it flat. Mm -hmm. But this is a very simple, easy thing to do. This uh, stone is divided in half and on this side is a very coarse grit and on here is a fine grit. So when you find one that's all dinged up, the first thing you want to do is to flatten the back of it. So this is the coarse grit, and when you're using these, you put a little bit of honing fluid on it. You don't need a lot. Now where do you get that? You can buy that at the same place we went to today, a woodworking store. Lowe's will have it, and you just sort of see how I'm rubbing that in? Yeah. And when you're doing this, you don't want to just do it in one spot, because what you'll do is you'll wind up with a stone like that, mm -hmm. because you're, you're actually taking away a little bit and abrading your stone. So you want to work around your stone like that. So we switch to the smoother side, put a little bit of oil, and we start again with the same thing. You have to do the bottom and the top. So now, 
it's hard to do this top by hand. Now I've been doing it a long time, but what you do is you bring it up until you feel that flat. Right. And see by pushing down there, I can feel where it's supposed to be. And then I can just work it this way. If you're not skilled at holding it like this, you can buy these jigs like this. And what this does is this allows you to set the angle of the blade. These adjustments will change it. And this one you just work this way. So if you're nervous to use any kind of power tool, this is the kind of tool you use in order to shape wood. So you want to smooth it or you want to make a little rounded edge, something like that. This is what you're going to use. And these are all planes. And Chet, how many planes do you own? About 200 and the one that I bought today. So 201, we'll say. So he loves his planes. So how do any of these work and why on earth do we need these? Well. The thing is that you don't need as many as I have. Okay. These are all smoothing planes and their purpose is to smooth the top of a board. The longer planes are called jack planes and this is a jointer plane. You can see how long this is. <laughs> the job of this plane is purely to take curves out of wood. So if you have a long door that doesn't fit yeah. and you notice that it's tight on one side and it's loose on another you want to plane that but you don't want that to be curved so if a you, lot of us have that issue in our homes right? today. yeah and and if you took a short plane like this it would just ride inside that curve mm -hmm. and that wouldn't help you it make would it just worse. it would make it worse you'd have yeah. a gap in a different place yeah. so you use a longer plane like this but this is a professional's plane no homeowner really needs to have this when they can use something smaller like this right. that's easier to plane, easier to store, <laughs> easier to store, easier to use, yeah. and it'll it won't do it exactly as good as these longer ones. How heavy it, is this? Is this a heavy try tool? That. Oh no, no, it's not heavy at all. I think you'd be able to use this very easily. Now try this one. Yeah, I think this is gonna be really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> these are the ones to look for, and it's a Stanley number no. five. Great. And it says number no. five right on the front. Oh, great. And all of these planes here are all the same in the sense that what they have here is a lockdown mechanism to keep the blade in place. This in front of the blade is called a chip breaker, this little round part. And what that does is when it slices through the wood, it takes the shaving and it pulls it out of the, blade, out of the plane. So that's the whole purpose of that. Now does that need to be just as sharp as the chisel that you just showed just us? Just the blade does. Okay. This holds down that mm -hmm. and keeps it in there. Nice and locked. This little knob here, when you turn it, it will advance the blade. So if you need to make a, a, a deeper, deeper cut, cut, okay. And you, I showed you earlier about doing the shavings and how you can get them very that's thick. That's fun. On this one, you see right through the side, there's a blade all the way to the edge. Right. This is called a rabbit plane. But because the blade comes all the way to the side, I'll show you on the piece of wood over there, I can cut all the way up against another shoulder. Perfect. Which I can't do with this one because this blade is that far away from that shoulder. So in other words, a piece of wood would have to be in the center of this in order to catch the whole thing. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay, this is just amazing. He's making these spills. This is what this is called, this curled up little thin piece of wood, um, which I guess actually shop owners used to use to light fires with. Um, I think they're really, really cool. I think they're great to use in craft projects. Um, and I could see these used you know, to decorate gifts and if they're thin enough, you can actually make them into little bows and decorative items like that. So this is really great. What are you using there? A, a 78? This is that number 78 okay. Philister plane, but I took the fence off of it. And you see how tight it makes that curl? And what I'm doing is instead of usually you use that, this plane like this in a straight line like that. But what I'm doing is I'm turning it almost completely sideways. And I'm digging in and you see that little thing come out the side? <laughs> Just like that. Now, it, practically speaking, where would you find something like this on something that a homeowner would work on? Well, if you were making a picture frame where you want this to be the front of the frame and you want the glass to go in and then the picture and you need room for cardboard behind and then a nail, you need a rabbit on that. Okay, and you're not using two different pieces of wood to accomplish that, you're using one piece of wood. Exactly. Okay. So you can just make whatever piece of wood you want for the frame on right. the front right. and then you can come back here on the side and with this plane, I set the 
the fence against the wood and that prevents me from going in any further this way. Mm -hmm. So however deep I want it to go that way I do that. And I'm just going to go right across like that and see there's the shaving. Oh yeah. It's super thin so you can kind of see that it's not taking off a whole lot of wood at a time. So you can't get in trouble with this very much either. No. Yeah. And, and you can control how thick this is by raising and lowering the blade. So we cut the rabbit with the plane. We didn't use a saw at all. Started up here and I kept going down until I got the right depth that I wanted. But let's say there's a little bit of roughness here on the side that we want to get rid of. The number 99, mm -hmm. it has the blade on the side here. So we can set that right against there and clean up that edge by just pushing down and now feel that edge. Yeah, that's amazing. It's nice and smooth. This is a spoke shave. This is a shave and this is an antique one made of boxwood and, in, and the blade is here and it comes through in these two posts. This is used to push away. So if you're shaping a round leg, See, this curve here will follow that round. You know, I have a lot of viewers that actually take furniture that they might have seen at a garage sale and try to repurpose it somehow, maybe cut a top off a hutch or something like that, but that might be a great tool to kind of reshape some of the edges so that you're making it look like something a little bit more modern. Absolutely. The trick about this plane is that the blade is at a very low angle. Those planes, the blade is high. Like, is if you have a sharp edge, you can't get paint or finish to stick if it's a right. really sharp edge. Yes. So you need to sort of round this a little bit. It's producing a nice little soft bevel. Right. Nice and soft, no sharp edge. That's and then great. paint will adhere. This is called a scribe. And what this does is you see it has a metal plate here, mm -hmm. and that's going to rub against the piece of wood that you're working with. So this is really just for marking wood if you're trying to get uh, multiples of something? Yes. Okay. So if you, if you were going to make a bunch of picture frames and mm -hmm. you had to cut a certain piece out right. and you wanted to keep repeating it, um, you would set this to one set. Basically all this does is it follows the wood and by running along the side you see how it leaves that little nail mark? Absolutely. I'm going to color that in pencil so your viewers can see because it's kind of hard, but you see how yeah. easy? Yeah, and there's a nice little groove there you can kind of follow along. And it's perfectly parallel to the side. Right. And the purpose of that groove there also is when you're cutting, you can put your, your saw right into that groove to keep a straight line going. This is called a bevel. Okay. And this I is adjustable. Help. I can come in here and do another line and come in here and repeat that line. And now how about this? Well, this is an extension of that because this is a square. This is an old craftsman square. This is probably 75 years old. Wow. And um, the nice thing about this is that you can come here and I can draw a line and it's at a 90 degree angle to the edge of the board so I can saw along that. I think this is one of the most useful tools in all of any workshop right there. I think that you need nail punches and they come in sets. These are really, really handy. And you see one is very, very small. Yep. And then medium and large. Yep. So why do you have a punch rather than just taking a hammer and a nail? What, are well, you... if I hammer a nail into a board and the nail is showing there, Yep. I don't want it to show. I want to drive it all the way into the wood so then I can either putty over it yep. so it disappears or I can plug it and put a piece of wood over it. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If I were to hit it with a hammer, there's the little nail. My hammer's this big. <laughs> yeah. So you I'm going to get a it's... big dent yeah. in the wood. Yeah, so definitely. you only drive the nail down until it's almost flush. Then you pick the one that'll sit inside that. Yep. Tap it, it in and it'll drive it into the board. Yeah, makes a really nice finish. He just taught me uh, how to use this today. I have never seen one of these before and it's going to become my favorite tool, I think. This, this is a great tool yeah. and these are still available. They're great for picture framers or if you, um, if you just have, if you're putting a really light board on top of another board mm -hmm. where it doesn't require a lot of hammering. Yeah, or if it's a t teeny tiny nail. And there's a rod inside of here. Okay. And you can see it when yep. I push it up. And yep. there's a spring. So you put your nail inside there. Mm -hmm. And then you figure out where you want to put it. So if you want to put it in the middle of this line here. And then you just give it a push. 
Wow, that's that's set in there so well. And this is so familiar to me and probably so many out there too, but you have an additional feature here, which is this little metal rod going through the middle. Well, and that's important. When you buy these and you look at them in the, and, and if they don't have that, then it's just a folding ruler. Right. And it's something you can use to measure and that's not a problem. But when you find the ones that have this, that's an added benefit. So let's say you need the measurement of this width. And it's a lot easier, I think, than a tape measure to use something that's rigid rather than flexible. So go ahead and demonstrate that, Chad. So with this tool, what you do is you open it up until it just fits inside the opening. So here's the extra space. You see this over here? And what you do is you just slide this rod out till you get to there. Then you can take it, take this measurement and add that one inch and you have your inside dimension. This is a perfect vice for somebody who is a, a, a home crafter or uh, anybody who doesn't really have a shop but wants to be able to use something like these tools in their house. This is just a countertop right here and this just cranks and, and, and fits to the countertop. The nice thing about this little vice, it's not very expensive, you can find them on eBay probably for only about $20. When you put a board in there, you see it's supported all the way across right. the table. You lay it right on the table. So this is really handy, especially if you're all by yourself and you want to get a project done. This is your second, third, and fourth yeah. hand, really. <laughs> and the nice thing is, that's for good for planing this yeah. way. But if we wanted to plane this part, yeah, that, it will that's also... That's really convenient. So we can do that. This is called a Versa vice. So like I vice have, versa. I have a vice. I've never seen a versa vice. <laughs> Go ahead and demonstrate. First of all, you see it pivots. Yeah. So I can pull it off the countertop and I can put a board in this way, a long board, right. and I can work on it up here. Or I can put a board here and work on it. But the second that I close this up... It's locked. It doesn't, it doesn't pivot move. anymore. As soon as you open it, it'll pivot. But you see here, it has a yeah. hole here and a hole here. Right. So the same vise can be put on like that, and now you can work something this way. Right. Okay, and so with one of these, it's very easy to use. Don't be afraid of these. Remember what I said, this sets, this brass knob sets the depth. It is just taking that top shaving off and leaving you with these little curls. I could see a lot of my artist friends that are doing mixed media actually applying some of this to some of their artwork and creating a really one-of-a-kind piece. This thing cracks me up. Why on earth do we need one of these? <laughs> I know you were laughing at my bigger one of those earlier, but these are really, really great clamps and they're very old style by Jorgensen. And the great thing about them is, if you notice here, it's exactly the same as that but smaller. If I take this and I turn it this way, I could fit two feather boards together and clamp them that I couldn't do with a normal clamp because of this angle. But what you're doing there and the way you're cranking it mm -hmm. is if it's perfectly parallel, when you start, no matter when you crank it, it stays that way. See, it's still parallel, both sides. So that's the way to open and close them. Okay. But. Let's use them. Let's <laughs> use them, exactly. All I've done here is I've taken one of those same clamps mm -hmm. and I clamped it to the counter with this one. So I all of a sudden have a perfect clamp. Yeah, this is really, really tight. Now I want to show you a C-clamp. Everybody thinks that these are C-clamps, but you see it's really, it's really a G. <laughs> <laughs> this is a C-clamp and it's the shape of a C. So what's the benefit of using a C-clamp versus a G-clamp? Here's the big difference, is this one, if I wanted to clamp a board, this is as far in as I can put this clamp. Right. I can buy bigger ones, but I can only go up to there. With a C-clamp, the board can go all the way back to here, so right. I can reach further onto the board when I clamp them together and get more pressure in the middle. Typical bar clamp that you see, these are Jorgensen's as well. So Chet, what is this clamp for and how does it differ from the others? Well, this is a bar clamp, and there are bigger ones and heavier duty ones, but this is a nice light duty one. Okay. You can buy them in different lengths, and they're great for hobbyists 
or chair repair, things like that, okay. where you want to bring two legs together and it or, works. Or let's say maybe your picture frame was broken, which I know some of these fall from time to time. Absolutely. You're going to glue the parts that you need yes. and clamp it together. This one looks a little familiar to me. You know, I have a lot of clamps in our workshop and actually they're great because they're trigger fed and you know, you can kind of squeeze things together. But hand, you've yeah. got a little lever here uh, that's a little bit different than mine. And what do you use this one for? And, and this is just like this because it has a bar. So this is a bar clamp and this is a bar clamp. But like you said, this is the type of thing that you can just squeeze together and, um, and it'll, it'll yep. clamp. Okay. But not only does it have this lever, it has four pads. So if I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to clamp this board, the nice thing is all I have to do is to clamp it together like that. So this is the modern version of maybe this one in With, a way. Yes. Because you've got the pads and it's plastic, it's a little easier to use. With a little addition. Okay, what's the addition? The addition is this lever that you pointed out. Okay. That releases it to let go. Uh-huh. Now, if I had something that I wanted to pull apart, like a chair that was loose, and I want to spread those legs so I can take the broken rung out. Oh, a lot of us have if that I'm issue. I'm trying to pull with, it apart. It's pictures. hard. You don't want to hit it with a hammer because you dent the legs. And how do you do that all by yourself if you need a second person to help you so kind of pull it? This one will pretend that that's a leg here Yep. and a leg here. Yep. Right? Yep. So all we do is we turn it to this and, and it pushes, if you have here, you spread see, it, apart. it spreads apart. That's and it, great. It multiplies your force with this mechanism, can pull it apart, and it serves the opposite purpose when you come back to pull it together. You know, Chet, thank you so much for stopping by. This has really been a treat. I think that anybody that's watching this can gain some great information about things that they can add to their own workshop or their toolbox. Well, I've enjoyed it. Oh, I appreciate you inviting me to. Thank you. So we're going to do a project in the future, and please stay tuned for that. This is Chester Spear. Please catch him on his YouTube channel. Please subscribe to him. And this is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. Please subscribe, like, share, and follow. And we'll mutually bring you a project in the future and then follow our channels. And we'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.